towards the sun, um, some of that plasma was getting trapped in the, in the field lines and illuminating them. But then what was really spectacular was when the material hit the surface of the sun again, it was a bit like sort of bombs going off. There was, was a little was isolated brilliant points of light, and that, that was, in, that was in, in, intriguing. In fact, um, the, the, I'm making a film at the moment for, for NOVA and National Geographic, which is uh, uh, f focusing on the sun. So I, I've spent with my editor quite a lot of time looking at these fantastic solar images now and they're so engaging I and mean, we sit there and sort of forget our job and marvel at these wonderful yeah, images <laughs> you there's you always see something every time you look at look at them there's something new to see it, it seems it, it, it's such an seems such an alien landscape but in such high resolution now it's it's wonderful that's right i mean i um i found myself this afternoon i, I was using this, this helio viewer software and um I found myself just sat looking at, at the movies over and over. Um, of, of actually a different event. I was looking at what the sun has been up to today, and I just caught this an, another eruption, another coronal mass ejection um, occurring. And, um, and I suddenly sort of caught myself just being mesmerised by these images. And, and I, I quite often do that. And I, I love the fact that the sun is so scientifically interesting, but also so aesthetically appealing as well. And um, and we look at the sun with so many different parts of the spectrum now. So we use visible light, we use ultraviolet light, we use x-rays. And it looks different in each of these wavelength ranges. And then you can put them all together, you can combine the images, and, yeah, they're absolutely spectacular. And, and as I said before, anyone can get hold of these movies as well, which is fantastic. Isn't this great that we've got... Uh... Uh, scientists here, we have professional astronomers, uh, PhDs in astronomy that just love what they're doing and they love the things they're seeing. This is not just dry and mathematical and uh, physics uh, equations. Uh, these are people who are in love with the things that they study. Uh, yeah. Very, you're that, both very fortunate, I think. Uh, well, I think I think that's really, I, I mean, I can't, I have to put my hands up here. I can't profess to be an astronomer. I mean, that was quite some time ago now, 15 years ago or so. Uh, but but it, it's what led me into my profession, which is now filmmaking, because there are so many amazing stories uh, in science, and in particular astronomy, and um, the kind of images that uh, we, we're able to see now are just totally... Uh, well, they certainly excite me, and I, it, it's that wonderful process of detective work, you know, for the first time, be it Hubble or be it the Solar Dynamics Observatory or uh, another particular satellite. It, you really, I really get this feel. It's a golden age. We're seeing these wonderful images, and, and it's lovely to be able to sort of weave stories around them of mm. scientific discovery. I think you're being uh, too modest, uh, Duncan. I know it's said that a person is an astronomer, professional astronomer, if uh, half or more of their living comes from astronomy. Uh, there was Milton Humason. You might know his story. He was a mule driver at the old uh, Mount Wilson Observatory, and he became a world-renowned astronomer without ever having any degrees. But if you make uh, more than half your living from it... Uh, but in your case, Duncan, I would say that even if you were a waiter... Uh, you have a PhD in astronomy. You're an astronomer. There, there it is. Well, it's kind of, kind of you to say so. I, I, it's uh, it's always been a passion, that's for sure. Meantime, we're watching the live lunar eclipse uh, coverage presented by uh, SLU.com, and we're heading now towards the uh, the final probably seven minutes before the partial phases begin again. We have seen. A normal eclipse. Normal is good in space because, you know, the Mayans said the world's going to end. We, we want to make sure that they're wrong. And uh, so far, they are wrong. Uh, we have uh, two distinguished astronomers, uh, Lucy Green and Duncan Kopp, uh, joining us here. I'm Bob Berman for uh, the live coverage of the total lunar eclipse. The moon's just rising from places like um, England right now, unfortunately, in case you were wondering. When it rises for people in North America, the eclipse will be over and you'll be left with an ordinary full moon, the full moon of June. Uh, earlier on, we talked about the different names for the full moon of June. It really hardly matters. A little bit of the lore, the legend, the mythology, mental illness, births, uh, all the 
things that people have believed about the full moon, and that's what we'll be left with here uh, when the eclipse is over. We're uh, very exciting. We can start seeing if you're hitting the Cyprus button, the telescope that's bringing to you from Cyprus. Maybe uh, that shows more of the brighter light coming in on the left or east side of the moon, uh, har- uh, harbinger of the end of the eclipse. The image from Dubai has perhaps a little bit more of a red cast, I think a little bit more of an accurate cast to what you'd see if you're actually observing the eclipse. Uh, We've been also talking about uh, other things like sunlight on the moon and the role that sun is playing in our future um, hopes for returning to the moon and to other places in the universe. Uh, One of the problems is that the sun sends out these pesky particles and... uh, Broken bits of atoms, protons, electrons, and uh, especially the heavy stuff, uh, protons, if I I remember my high school science, protons, I think, are 1,860, is it, times uh, heavier than electrons? So they they pack a bit of a wallop, and uh, if you're leaving Earth's magnetic field and heading outward, uh, your HMO coverage may may come to a stop. Your your medical coverage may, may, may not cover you anymore because... Space is not good for you. But the moon is certainly good for us aesthetically as we've been enjoying these uh, amazing images. The right side of the moon is more fully in the middle of Earth's shadow. The left side of the moon now is about to emerge from Earth's shadow, and we've experienced syzygy. Do we, either of you uh, play Scrabble? Yes, I do. I love Scrabble. I enjoy it too, actually, I have to say. <laughs> Then, uh, you know, if... Uh, that sounds uh, like a good word to remember, actually. Yes, syzygy, yes, syzygy. What's the point you, score for that? <laughs> well, you, you'd you need more than the the one Z that's, uh, or Z, as you would say, uh, that's available in Scrabble. So you'd have to use a couple of blanks. I'm not sure it's <laughs> it's worth it. You'd need, I think, three Ys, right? Syzygy, yeah, three Ys, two Zs. Uh, so I, I, I don't know if that's really worth it. Um but uh, that that means a three-bodied lineup in space. Uh, some people think that, uh, well, the full moon, since the full moon is um, every month, is a lineup with the sun, the earth, and the full moon. Well, why doesn't the moon go to uh, into Earth's shadow? And that's because the moon has a little five-degree tilt uh, that usually carries it above the Earth's shadow every time it's on full moon or uh, passes below. Our shadow, so it's kind of rare to go into the shadow, and rarer since it's been a decade since this happened centrally into the middle of the shadow the way it is now. So it's a unusual lunar eclipse. When we come back, and we're going to have a station break soon, but when we come back, uh, I'm hoping that uh, both uh, Lucy and Duncan can stay with us a while longer, and uh, we'll be watching the transition to the partial part of the eclipse and some other cool stuff, too. We haven't even uh, uh, really gotten into some of the real oddities with the moon, like what's going on on the far side. You know, when we first sent the spacecraft, nobody had ever known what the far side of the moon is. No human beings had ever been there till that first Russian spacecraft went there in 1959. We assumed the side that we see was similar to the far side, but uh, for all we knew for sure, maybe the moon was just a half shell. And they were just two by fours and scaffolding, holding up a shell there. And there wasn't really even a far side. But everybody thought that the far side would look like the side that we see. But beep, wrong again, wrong as usual. Turns out the far side of the moon looks totally different. Looks like a different world than the side of the moon that we do see. And that's just one of the oddities of the moon. So when we come back, one of the things we're going to be talking about are the strange findings of the Apollo program and the things that make the moon so very different from uh, the planet that we are living on. We're watching an eclipse of the moon. Let's let's, let's see why the moon is so special and uh, maybe give some reasons why we might want to go back to it or maybe uh, not want to go back to the moon. So we're going to take a short station break and uh, when we come back after only a few seconds, Uh, We'll continue with this. Uh, Stay with us for continuing coverage of the live lunar eclipse.
Welcome to SLU Space Camera's live coverage of the total lunar eclipse, sponsored by Transformers, Dark of the Moon, the new Michael Bay film in cinemas from June 29th. The only way to see it is in 3D. SLU's live audio coverage of the total lunar eclipse is hosted by astronomer Bob Berman and powered by WSRadio.com, the worldwide leader in Internet talk. Hey, we're back. I'm Bob Berman here in upstate New York, beautiful area uh, in the mountains here where the moon is not out. It's still daytime here. We have as uh, as my guests here uh, two wonderful astronomers uh, in the London area. One is Lucy Green, a solar expert, and the other is Duncan Kopp, who is trying to say he's not really an astronomer, even though he has a doctorate in astronomy. But that's because he's uh, mostly been doing these marvelous things for the last few years, making movies that have sold half a million uh, DVD copies and won uh, Best Picture Award at Sundance and just little things like that. (laughs) And uh, so we're back with them, and I want to say that this event is sponsored by Transformers, Dark of the Moon. That's the new Michael Bay film. In cinemas from June 29th, the only way to see it is in 3D. Okay, we're back with the moon, and uh, right now, the left side, the left uh, most, and you can see it for yourself right now, the eastern edge of the moon is about to leave Earth's shadow, and we're going to see that shadow band marching across the moon. Now, the... Uh, the band is not a sharp line simply because the uh, thing that's uh, casting the shadow, the sun, is not a point source. If the sun uh, were a little kind of halogen light, a little tiny speck, then the uh, Earth's edge would be a very, very sharp edge. But you know that if you look at your own shadow as cast on the uh, sidewalk in front of you on a sunny day, you know that it has kind of a blurry edge, and that's simply because the sun has a diameter to it in the sky. It has a half-degree diameter, and uh, the larger the source of light, and uh, the more blurry the edge of the shadow will be. That's why fluorescent lights, those long tubes, cast totally, absolutely blurry shadow. So we're going to see the blurry edge shadow of the uh, Earth cast onto the moon and supplying one more proof of what the geometry is and one more proof that uh, Earth and the sun, even it, it even tells you the size of the Earth and the sun, all of this just for observing this eclipse. Okay, guys, we're back. Hi. Hello. Hi. So um, as we continue now in our uh, final hour, uh, let's uh, throw it up. What would either of you like to talk about? Looking at the the pictures coming through on the feed now, we can see the sun visually, but um, tying into what we were talking about earlier, the the, the moon is. Um, did I say the sun then or the moon? I may, may have said the sun, but the, the moon is in a special place at the moment, and it's, it's actually inside the Earth's magnetosphere. Um, so that that always happens at full moon. It spends about six days in, inside the Earth's magnetic field, where as we talked about earlier, there are all these charged particles. And um, so the, the moon, as a result of being in amongst these charged particles, should be negatively charged at the moment. <laughs> How's that for a thought? <laughs> well, the, you know, this is fabulous stuff. This is absolutely <laughs> wonderful, fabulous stuff. Now, when you say within our magnetic field, uh, does that mean that uh, uh, it's, it's fully blocked from the... 